Okay, Unit 17 Grammar. Okay, let's look at this together. First of all, we look at the use of still. A situation or action continues from the past to the present without change. The normal position of the word is in the middle of the sentence. Example, I had a temperature yesterday. I had a temperature this morning. It is now 5 p.m. and I still have a temperature. I still have a temperature. Okay, so you see the situation is continuing. It's continuing from the past to the present without change. We are still looking for a new car. This means we continue to look for a new car. Let's also look at hardly. Hardly is an adverb, and it usually comes before the verb it modifies. It is negative. Used this way, it means almost not. I can hardly walk. I can almost not walk. Do not confuse hard, that means with effort, not soft or difficult, with hardly. Hard is an adjective and hardly is a frequency adverb. I hardly work means I do not work almost. I almost do not work. Instead, I work hard. I work with great effort. English is a hard language means English is a difficult language. This bread is hard means this bread is not soft. Okay, if you have access, you can do exercises one, two, three, and four from the Moodle course. That's the self-study course. And if you are interested in that, just leave a comment and I will uh, contact you. Imperatives. Imperative sentences are used to give commands, directions, and instructions. The infinitive without to, which is the simple form of the verb, is used. And you is the implied subject. Hold the club like this. This means you hold the club like this. And in this case, you means both singular and plural because you hold the club like this. I am talking to you singular. You hold the court club like this. I'm talking to a lesson, a class, a group of people. Okay, but the imperative hold the club like this is for both singular and plural. Question tags. A tag is something we add at the end of a sentence. It is a question that comes from the subject and auxiliary verb, or the verb to be, in the first part of the sentence. A pronoun is used instead of the subject, and the auxiliary verbs are inverted, like a question form. And the tag is negative. It is always contracted. Okay, so let's look at this. Okay, if I say Tuesday is, today's Tuesday, that's affirmative. So the question tag, isn't it? Today is Tuesday, isn't it? So we have today is the subject. And then we have is, which is the ber verb. So we need to invert that. So we have the verb and the subject. The pronoun for the subject is it. So today, 
re change to it and it's contracted so isn't it isn't it today we change to it because that is the pronoun and then we use that after the verb in the negative contracted form it sounds very very difficult and in fact it is when the main verb is negative the question tag is positive so if I say today isn't Tuesday that's an affirmative the question tag is negative is it today isn't Tuesday is it so today is the subject and we invert it and change it to the pronoun it the verb is isn't is negative but we just put that before and instead of making it negative we make it positive so is it is it the question tag is used like a rhetorical question the question tag wants the listener to confirm the statement so today is Tuesday isn't it it's like I think today is Tuesday, but I want you to confirm. This is very conversational form. It's very important for the conversation. If you want, you can do exercise six. Let's go on to indirect objects. We have a subject plus a verb plus what or who. So I speak French. French is the direct object. What do I speak? I speak French. I give some flowers to my mom. The direct object is mom. No, I'm sorry. The, the direct object is flowers. And mom is the indirect object. You see, what do you give? I give flowers. And who do you give them to? I give them to my mom. Okay, now notice that we're using to here uh, for the indirect object. Not all verbs can take an indirect object, but you can use the indirect object immediately after the verb without the preposition. You see, we will eliminate this too. It's possible to use a pronoun for the indirect object. Okay, so let's see. I gave my mom some flowers. You see, I've eliminated the two. I have gave my mom some flowers. So the direct object is after the indirect object. And the indirect object does not need the two. I gave my mom indirect object some flowers object so let's look at that she is the subject gave is the verb the book is the object to her son is the prepositional uh, object okay we're going to change to her son to an indirect object she gave her son the book so here gave her son all right, if you have access, you can do exercise seven. Let's look now finally at the present perfect tense. Now, this is quite difficult. The, affirm the affirmative form, we have the subject, we have the auxiliary, which is to have, and then we have the past participle. Okay, remember that when you, you, when you learn the verbs, you should learn the three forms. See... Today I see, saw, yesterday I saw, and seen. That is the past participle. Now, on regular verbs, the past participle, participle is the same as the past tense. But many verbs have three different forms, so you have to learn the past participle. I have had it for a couple of months. I is the subject. The first have is the auxiliary, to have. And the second have is the past participle. 
Remember the three forms of the verb to have. Today I have, yesterday I had, and in the present perfect I have had. So we have two forms of the verb have. I have had it for a couple of months. Let's look at number two. The students, subject, have, auxiliary, studied. Studied is the past tense of study, but it's also the past participle because it's, an, it's a regular verb. The students have studied. Number three, he has lived in this city all his life. He is the subject. Has is the auxiliary, and we have to agree the form with the subject. We have to put the agreement here. We have to con uh, conjugate have to has because it's third person singular. Lived is the participle of the verb live. Live, lived, lived. So it's a regular verb, so it's the same as the participle. In this city, all his life. Let's look at the negative form. We have the subject. We have the auxiliary again to have. We have not. And then we have the past participle. I have not. I haven't had problems. Okay, let's look at the form first. I, subject, have auxiliary, not follows the auxiliary, uh, I have not, and had is the third form. Uh, if you want, you can, con you can uh, contract, have not, I haven't had problems. Anne has not lived in this city all her life. Anne, subject, uh, has, is the third person singular, conjugated verb has, and not follows uh, the auxiliary, and then we have the third form of the regular verb lived. And hasn't lived in the city all her life. Finally, the question. Let's see the question form. We have the auxiliary, we have the subject, and we have the past participle. Okay, if you remember the an anacrim kazi, question word, auxiliary, subject, and infinitive. This form follows the same. We have the auxiliary, a, a, z, the subject, and instead of the infinitive, we have the past participle. But the, the place, the, the position is here. So, have you had problems? Have is the auxiliary. You is the subject. Had is the past participle. You see it's in the position of the infinitive, but it's the past participle. In a normal question, you would see have, uh, did you have, do you have, but the order is the same. Have you had problems? Okay. Has he lived in this city all his life? Okay. This is the third person singular, so I have to use has with he. Has he lived in the city all his life? Okay, those are the three forms, the affirmative, the negative, and the question. Now let's look at what the present perfect is used for. The present perfect expresses an activity or a situation that started in the past but has a link with the present. It is not important when the activity or the situation started, so the time is specific. Um, Okay, just wanted to put that in order. Uh, okay, so activity or situation started in the past, but a link with the present. It is not important when the activity or the situation started, so the time is unspecific. What does that mean? Okay, you can use since and for to talk about when the action or the situation began, okay? 
I said that the situation or the activity started in the past, so I can tell you exactly when it started, when it started, but it is not important uh, to know exactly when. Uh, okay, so you can use since and for to talk about when the action or the situation began. Okay, I've had it for two months. So I began to have it two months ago. You see, I'm using the simple past to talk about exactly when the action started. Uh, when the action um, actually took place. I began to have it. But I'm telling you, I've had it so this situation is not finished. It's not finished. I've had it since 2017. I began to have it in 2017. Okay, so you am using began in 2017. This action is concluded. It's finished. Um, so I can use the simple past. But if I want to use the present perfect, I use since with 2017. Since is a point in time, for is a period. Okay, let's look at some examples. Uh, okay, yes. I've been here for two minutes. I've been here for three hours. I've been here for six days. I've been here for about two weeks. I've been here for almost 10 months. I've been here for many years. I've been here for a long time. But the fact is, I am still here. You see, this action is linked to the present. We can use since for a point in time. Since can be followed also by a subject and a verb, not only a reference of time, but you can ask, actually construct a new subject and a new verb. I've had my bicycle since I was a child. Since I was a child, we have a new subject, I, and a new verb, was. Okay, I have had, I is the subject, have had is the verb. So since constructs a clause that has a new subject and a new verb. Okay, this is a since clause in the simple past. The verb is in the simple past. I've had my bicycle since subject and verb since I was a child. This is the main clause. This is the since clause. Okay, you can do the exercise eight. Let's look at questions now with how long. Okay, how long have you been in this city? How long have you been in the city? For five months. Okay, the next dialogue, A says, How long has Al had a mustache? And B says, Since he was 21 years old. C, example C, How long have you known Ilaria? Since the beginning of the term. So, the question form of the present perfect is how long, because how long is a question word. It's two words, but it's in the position of the question word, how long, then the auxiliary have, then the subject, and then the past participle. How long is a very common question with the pre present perfect because it, uh, it links the beginning of the action with now. Okay, it talks about time. All right, the last thing we're going to see is be able with can and could. Okay, I am able to afford a car means that I can afford the car. I am able to afford a new car. I will be able to afford a new car next year. You see, I can afford a new car next year, so I can put the verb to be in the future, will be, 
and this becomes a future tense. I will be able to afford a new car next year. You cannot use will with can, although can, uh, generally can, uh, will be all, can be used also in the future. I wasn't able to afford a car, a new car last year. That means I couldn't afford a new car last year. I wasn't able, you see, I changed the uh, verb to be with uh, the past tense, wasn't, and be able to uh, afford. So that means I couldn't afford a car, new car last year. That's the end of the lesson for, uh, for now. Let's... Um,